Hello everyone, this is Steve Suffoletto from SUNY Erie, formerly known as Erie Community College or just simply ECC. Uh, the next few minutes I want to discuss resolution in terms of PPI, SPI, LPI, and DPI. The primary purpose of this presentation is to define common terms that we use in the industry when it comes to resolution. For example, PPI is pixels per inch, SPI is spots per inch, LPI is lines per inch, but it's really talking about the halftone dots. And then DPI, which can be very confusing because we don't know if it's talking about the spots or the dots. The other purpose here is to list the resolution of all the equipment that we use in our laboratory here at the college. This slide here is just a hand-drawn table. It helps me get organized on my subject content, how I want to present it. So from this, I get a little bit more formal and create the PowerPoint presentation. Well, the very first term we need to define is pixel. And pixel is a word that comes from two other words, picture element. And a pixel is the smallest image area. Now, pixels have three characteristics. They have a size. You could measure their width or their length, and that would be the PPI pixels per inch. That pixel has a position or, like, or location on a raster grid. Grid. We call that the addressability. So what horizontal column, what vertical row. And then the third characteristic a pixel has is its bit depth. It could be a single bit, which means it's either on or off, black and white, binary or it can be a multi-bit, uh, which would be a grayscale if it's 8-bit, where 0 is black and 255 is white. So this illustration to the right of Abraham Lincoln shows you the width or the size of the pixel, its location in a XY coordinate system, and its bit depth in an 8-bit grayscale. Now, pixels, uh, PPI, is commonly used for image capture. So that would be something like a camera or a smartphone, or it'd be like a scanner, typically flatbed. Now, the sensors that are inside uh, these devices are old style PMT photomultiplier tubes that are in the old rotary drum scanners uh, that went to CCD charge couple devices. And now the current technology is called CMOS, which is complementary metal oxide semiconductors. Now for pixel, for image capture, we talk about a digital camera and it often has a megapixel size. So in this case, we have a 12 megapixel camera, which means we have maybe about 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. The actual physical size of that sensor is very small, as we saw in the earlier slide maybe 6.2 by 4.6 millimeters. That means each pixel size is very small, just 1.5 microns. We know that there's a thousand microns in a millimeter, and we know that one micron is one thousandth of a millimeter. So if you wanted to make a photographic quality print, 10 by 13 inches in size, you would typically use around 300 pixels per inch. So a 12 mix megapixel camera would do that for you. Uh, just as a footnote, Kodak invented the very first digital camera back in 1975. Now, in both of our Mac labs upstairs, we have scanners, flatbed scanners. Um, we have an older HP ScanJet G3110. Its pixels per inch is 4,800, and those scanners cost about $200. We also have Epson Perfection V850 Pros, their pixels per inch is 6,400. Uh, that cost about $1,200 when we bought three of those new in fall of 2018. Pixels or pixels per inch also refers to image display. And the old technology was a CRT cathode ray tube, which led to LCD liquid crystal displays. And the most current technology is LED light emitting diodes. So the Macs that we have upstairs in our labs are iMacs with 21.5 inch retina displays, which has a resolution of 4,096 by 2,304, which is 220 pixels per inch. 
the individual width of that pixel is 120 microns or 0.12 millimeters or 0.5 thousandths of an inch. And those iMacs are all new as of 2019. Well, now that we understand what a pixel is, let's talk about spots. And spots are for image output. So output technology could be photographic using infrared thermal or visible or ultraviolet UV. The technology could be electrophotographic, which we call EP. Most people refer to this as xerography, which uses a dry laser toner. Or that output technology could be inkjet. The media that we use for the output could be paper, which is what typesetters used to do, or it could be film, which is what image setters computer to film was, or it could be an aluminum metal plate or a polyester plate, which is what a plate setter CTP computer to plate is. And finally, we could output to just plain paper, which would be used for proofing or for printing. So to create that spot, the output device being a physical hardware contains a marking or a writing engine. So the RIP, the raster image processor, or the DFE, the digital front end, is gonna convert the pixels into spots, similar to what it does when it converts the vector into a raster. The marking writing engine can only image individual spots. And as you know, the larger dots are made up of smaller spots. An example of an output device that uses spots per inch would be computer to plate, CTP. We have a Mitsubishi Silver DigiPlater, DSP Echo 1633. It outputs at 2,400 spots per inch. And if you output at 150 lines per inch, you get 256 gray levels. And that's a single bit device, it's binary. The infrared laser in there is 635 nanometers red. And the scanner, the uh, drum is a flatbed drum, which we call a capstan. And that uh, photo polyester device purchased in 2005. Another example of a output device that uses spots would be a laser printer. And we have the HP Color LaserJet Enterprise M750s. They are electrophotographic, EP, or xerographic, using a dry laser toner. These devices output at 600 spots per inch, but they're not single bit binary, they're multi bit, four bit. That printer costs about $2,000, and we purchased two brand new in fall of 2019. Another example of a output device that uses spots would be inkjet abbreviated IJ. And we have an Epson Stylus Pro 7800. It has 180 nozzles and that technology is called DOD or drop on demand. And it has various resolutions from 720 to 1440 to 2880 spots per inch. And this device has eight colors, uh, a dark cyan, a light cyan, a dark magenta, a light magenta, a yellow, a black, and then a light black, and then a very light black. And finally, a fourth example of a marking or writing engine that outputs in spots is our MFP multifunction printer. We have a Ricoh Pro C5200S. It outputs at 1200 spots per inch. And typically it outputs at 200 lines per inch, which is a half tone dot. Of course, this is a dry laser toner technology. We purchased the Ricoh new in 2018 for a price of about $37,000. Okay, so we have discussed pixels and we've discussed spots. Now we need to talk about dots, which is measured in lines per inch or LPI. Now dots in this context always refers to the halftone dot, which is abbreviated HT for screening. Many several smaller spots make just one single larger laser dot. So if you take the spots per inch and divide it by the lines per inch, you get the cell grid width for an example, 2,400 spots per inch divided by 150 lines per inch, 
would give you a cell or a grid that is 16 by 16, which would allow you to have 256 gray levels. So LPI lines per inch always refers to halftone dots. Now the goal of halftone screening is not to be seen or to be noticed. It should look continuous tone, contone, or CT at a normal viewing distance. All halftone dots have four characteristics. They are the size, which can be small highlights, large shadow dots, and then halfway between would be midtones. And of course, you have a minimum dot and a maximum dot. Then you have the shape of the dot, which you can choose from your rip, typically a square dot, round dot, elliptical, or Euclidean. Another characteristic of the dot is its screen ruling measured in lines per inch LPI. They can be coarse screen, normal screen, or fine screen. And finally, the dot has an angle. Uh, so for multicolor printing, for color process, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, you need different angles pre to prevent from getting moiré patterns. Uh, hopefully you'll get a acceptable rosette pattern. And then of course, if you don't use AM amplitude modulation screening, but if you use FM, frequency modulated or stochastic screening, you don't have to worry about the moiré or rosette patterns at all. So this leaves us with our last term to define, DPI. DPI can be confusing because it could mean either the SPI or the LPI if the speaker does not define it in context. So to avoid confusion, I recommend we don't use the term DPI at all just use pixels per inch, spots per inch, and lines per inch, not dots per inch. To summarize what we just discussed, I have a little table here that shows you the device, its resolution, its typical output in LPI, its bit depth, and its colors. So for the scanner and the camera, it's typically around 4,000 pixels per inch, it's typically eight bits for each of the colors. So eight for the red, eight for the green, eight for the blue would be a 24 bit device. When it comes to your displays, they're typically around 200 pixels per inch. They're again, they're eight bit for the red, for the green and for the blue, so they're 24 bit. For inkjet printers, a typical resolution might be 720 spots per inch at 200 lines per inch. For a four bit device, and these are usually more than just four colors. So I have CMYK plus. In the case of the Epson Stylus Pro 7800, we have there's two cyans, two magentas, one yellow, and three blacks. For laser printers, a typical resolution is around 600 spots per inch or 200 lines per inch for four bit. And these are typically just and only CMYK. So you can't do spot colors. And then for CTP computer plate plate setters, their resolution is 2,400 spots per inch, which will give you 200 lines per inch, but these are single bit binary devices, so they're monochromatic. And for our laser, we have 635 nanometers. Well, thank you very much for watching and listening to this presentation. I hope you found it interesting and informative. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now.